Let me hear the word of God. Bathe in the word of God. Surround yourself in the word of God. Wrap yourself up in the word of God like a warm blanket. And then your eyes will become open. Grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Christ Jesus. Amen. Today, we're going to take a look at the music we're going to sing, that we're singing. What does it mean? There's a common theme that's going through it all. Change my heart, O oh God, is a song we just got done singing. How does that happen? What does that mean? How do we change our heart? What, what happens? Well, if we look at the songs and the order we're singing them in, it is very specific to the way that we come to faith. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see you. I want to see you. How do we open our heart? Opening our heart does not mean it's, it's uh, uh, something that, that we can just say, you know what, today I think I'm going to open up my heart. It just doesn't happen that way. That's not how Jesus works. That's not how the God works. That's not how the Holy Spirit works. But we can consciously say, and we can consciously pray, open, my, open the eyes of my heart, Lord. All through Scripture, you see people who need their eyes opened. And sometimes they listened. Sometimes they don't. And I'm going to speak, I speak specifically of open their eyes, their heart. There was a, a king by the name of Herod here, right? And, and Herod, Herod went and married his brother's wife. And it was not lawful to do such a thing. And John the Baptist, being the man he was, remember, repent. It's the Lord. The Lord is coming. John was not one to keep quiet, nor was he one who was very... He wore what? What did he wear? Camel skins. What did he eat? Bugs. He was a man of the wilderness, and he was not quiet. He said to Herod, you can't do that. That is wrong. You're not supposed to be sinning like that. And it, it wasn't necessarily Herod who started feeling guilty about it or started feeling bad about it caused a, a fire in Herodias, Herodias, his brother's wife or his wife, it caused a, a fire in her heart. She wanted revenge because she was, he was upsetting the family status quo. So he spoke up. Nothing to lose your head over, right? He spoke up. Herodias had, <clears throat> had, had him beheaded. Her heart, her heart did not change. Her heart did not change at all. Her, her eyes were not opened. Her eyes were closed by revenge. Her eyes were closed by Satan. By the fire that burned within her. That this guy embarrassed me and embarrassed us. There was a guy by the name of David, another king. And he was in his castle one day and happened to peer out the window. And what did he see? Bathsheba bathing down there. Bathsheba. First of all, I don't know why someone does that in the, in the, in the, in the site where people could look, but you know that's beside the point. Bathsheba was there, and David coveted her. David coveted her so badly that he had relations with her. And he loved, fell in love and coveted her and wasn't going to give her up so bad that what did he do? What did he do? He sent, he sent her husband where? To war. 
Go battle. Go battle. And not only that, but what did he do? He instructed men to kill him. If that is not somebody who needs have a change of heart, I don't know who does. There was another guy by the name of Let's see. It's, it's, it's still got battery. It's got green. And I just changed the batteries in this last week. There was another guy by the name of Saul. Saul was persecuting the Christians. Saul was uh, uh, there at the stoning of Stephen. He was what we call a bad man. A bad man. What happened to Saul on the road to Damascus where he was going to go and he was going to get a bunch more of those Christian guys. By the way, do you know that Christian was a slang word? It was, a, it was actually a, a, um, an insult, kind of like Yankee was. It was an insult, a slang insult for those people who believe in that crazy guy. He got knocked off his high horse. The light came and blinded him. Okay? So we have three guys I've just mentioned who are blinded. What happens? God intervened in each one's life in one way or the other. And that comes through hearing the word of God. Ancient words next song we did ancient words ever true changing me changing you we have come with open hearts oh let the ancient words impart open the eyes of my heart lord and now let me hear your word that is how we change we don't come here and sit down and say i decided to listen you know that's why the the, the old hymn i have decided to follow jesus really is kind of theolo theologically wrong jesus comes and finds us jesus works on our hearts. How? Confirmation 101. We get faith through hearing the word of God. Those ancient words. And David heard those ancient words and he changed. He became, he became a good king, the greatest king of Israel. Paul. All changed. He became, from Saul, the persecutor and the murderer, he became the disciple who was sent to witness to the Gentiles. To open their eyes. How? By hearing the good word. Paul also wrote a large part of the, a large part of the New Testament. God worked in his life so that through the word of God he too may influence our lives that's why we read the epistle we hear what the apostles have to say not because we have to sit down and do it but be, and, and have a story time but because it works upon our hearts it works upon our hearts and that is how the Holy Spirit works we come to faith through the hearing of God's ancient words and that's why they are so important. So change my heart. Make it ever true. Change my heart, oh God, may I be like you. See the progression here? See the progression? Open my eyes of my heart. Let me hear the word of God. Bathe in the word of God. Surround yourself in the word of God. Wrap yourself up in the word of God like a warm blanket. And then your eyes will become open. And you will start to see that we do not treat our neighbor's needs as our needs. Our needs are much more important, right? The disciples said, what, the, what is the greatest commandment? And what did Jesus say? Love the Lord your God 
and love your neighbor as yourself. I know I am the first one to stand in line to say that I'm a sinner. Uh-huh. You know, sometimes people put pastors on pedestals. I'm just like y'all. I need Jesus' saving grace too. I needed to have my eyes opened up. I need to be in his word every day so my heart can be changed. That's why our 9 o'clock daily devotions are so important. I don't care if you watch it at 9 or if you watch it later in the day. We are in the word every single day. Do you know how many people, when we don't do it, say, I really miss that. When we went to, on vacation to Birchwood for a week, and we didn't do it for a week, I really missed that, they said. But I'll tell you something, I missed that too. I missed that as well. We have to be in the Word every single day. I'd ask for a show of hands, but we're Lutherans, I probably wouldn't get any. But think about it. How many of you, how many of you when you're not in God's word, feel the absence of God, of God's word. Hmm? That's what it's about. We can't choose to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow. No. Jesus comes to us, works on our hearts with the Holy Spirit through the hearing of God's words. That's why we need to have our butts in the pew every single week. That's why we're in devotion at 9 o'clock every single day. That's why at first and third Sundays of the month, we come to the table and we receive his body and blood. Because our hearts and our eyes have been changed. That's the, that's the progression that we have of the, of the songs we're singing today. And so, you know, us northerners, there's always got to be a, and so. So what do we do with it? What's the last song we're singing? Go my, go my children with my blessing. Listen to that song as we sing it today. We have to go out into the mission field. We take our, our eyes of our heart that have been opened. We heard the ancient words of God. We have our hearts changed. Now what? What good is it? What, is it, what good is it to come sit in a pew if we're not going to leave here changed? And that, brothers and sisters, is what God calls us to do. What are you going to do with it? How are you going to help out? Are you going to go see your neighbor and carry their groceries? Are you going to go and, and, um, and help somebody with a chore? Are you going to do the dishes for your wife? Are you going to compliment your husband on the job he's done? Are you going to love your children enough to stay up way past 12 o'clock midnight for their birthday and get up then at 3 o'clock, take them to the airport, and come and preach a message? That's changing our hearts. That's what we're called to do. And I challenge you this week to have the courage and the strength and the wisdom to be in God's word every day and find out what it does for your life. May God bless us with that chat, with that tasks, with that task. Amen.